allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is called the order. All are present. Item number four. I'll make a motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to recess the commission's meeting at open salad board. Second. Commissioner Christian Warren, second by Commissioner Jim Greco to recess the commission's meeting at open salad board. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Say after the board. All right. All right, present. Item number three. Uh, motion to approve the minutes of May 13th salary board. Second. Motion by Treasurer Baddock, seconded by Commissioner Warren to approve item three, approval of the minutes of the May 13th salary board. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 So, here. Item four. I'll make a motion to approve item number four, posted on the agenda. Second. Motion by Christian Warren, signed by Christian Jean Greco to approve item four on the agenda to eliminate the full time union position of accounts payable, payroll, check processing, and the commissioner's office for the recommendation of our staff. Questions or comments? Yes. So, who's going to do that, that work? Uh, it's covered under item five. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item five. A motion to create full time union position of accounts payable, payroll, check processing in the treasurer's office at the present hourly rate of 1977 per hour. Benefits uh, according to the collective bargaining unit and government related <coughs> requirements. Further re recommendation of treasurer Kathy Benedict. I'll second that. Or wait, wait, wait. Uh, my concern is. I want to make sure we're doing this right. That's why there's a note there. Yeah, I, I see the note. Job's not I, changing. Who it's reporting to is always changing. Which I don't believe we should eliminate after right. Should have read five before we did four. Hmm. We eliminate a position. Or oh, that position no longer exists. Right. Now we're creating a new one. Well, I don't really think we are. I just think we're transferring Transfer. this person from one to another. I'm afraid. But I don't have that position in my office. Okay, we're going to give it to you. But I don't think we do it by creating okay, a we'll no it, full time. It, it's a plan of work with the union contracts that I am concerned about. That's okay. Right. Do it however That's, you think I just want it to be right. Yeah. It's not that I'm against it getting done. No, I hear you. You guys understand what I want to say? I'll withdraw saying? my motion. I think motion a, number four. Well, <sighs> Yeah. Now? I think what we want to say is is we want to transfer. Well, we need the, to not eliminate it. We just want to transfer the position that position from the, from the commissioner's office to the treasurer's office at the same rate of pay with all the same benefits. Okay. So did you just make that motion? Yeah. You remember what I said. Uh, okay, th this is this is something new though because this doing it this way has never been done this way before. Well, that's because we're getting smarter with the way we do things because we because try and do okay. things the right way and the union says, no, you can't do that. You just created a new position, so the Me Too clause says you got to roll it all the way back to the starting position, I, which we don't want I to happen. I defer to you because I do not. I am I'm not being cautious. With the, any of the six union contracts. Yeah. You guys, you're fine. We got a motion. What was? What was the you motion got a second. Again? I've got it. Motion, I motion to transfer the the uh, full time union position of accounts payable uh, payroll processing from the chief clerk's office to the treasurer's office. At the same rate of At pay with rate all rate the benefits pay. according to the collecting bargaining agreement and government mandated requirements. Okay, right. so does this mean we're just totally eliminating <coughs> motion four? Yes. We don't need that at all, so that's out. Right. Okay. Mm. Okay, okay questions or comments? Yes. Uh, what are the government mandated requirements? What would you call government mandated? Well, Obamacare. One. So health insurance, Obamacare, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anything else? That's the only um, that and unemployment, workman's comp. 
Okay, so who, was there a second? Yes. And, and who was that? That was Marianne. Mike made the motion, Marianne made the second. <coughs> Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, okay. Six. Motion to approve item six. This is on the agenda. Second. Okay, motion by Commissioner Jane Greco, second by Treasurer Bondick to approve item six on the agenda to increase the rate of pay for the full time union position of the second deputy treasurer from 1182 to 1192 per hour due to additional responsibilities, backup payroll, check processing. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any public comment on salary board? Yes. Uh, when you mention Obamacare, can you explain how that's working out for the county employees? Are you noticing it's costing any more for uh, medical care under Obamacare as before? Not at this time. <coughs> Item 7. Motion to adjourn. Second. <coughs> Motion by Commissioner Jim Greco, signed by Commissioner Warren, to approve Item 7 to adjourn the salary board. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, Commissioner's meeting is reconvened. <coughs> yes. Item six. Okay, item six. How about five? Five. I'll five. make a motion to approve oh. item number five is the strike agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Jim Greco, to approve item five on the agenda, to approve the minutes of the June 10th, 2015 commission meeting. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve <coughs> item number six. Is listed on the agenda. Second. Motion by Commissioner Jim Greco, second by Commissioner Warren to approve item six on the agenda to ratify and approve the electronic transfers and cash disbursements. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Make a motion to approve <coughs> item number seven with the. Um, we need to add the dates for Lawrence Hardy and Diane Quatraki. The last one, August 17th to the 20th. Whatever it is, yeah. Okay, got <clears throat> Motion, second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Jim Greco to approve the and ratify the following seminar requests and payments for the agenda. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> Motion to approve item number eight that's listed on the agenda. Second. Motion by Christian Jim Greco, second by Christian Warren, to approve item eight on the agenda, hiring of Michael Torres of Edwardsville to the open part time position of corrections officer. Questions or comments? Yes. How far is Edwardsville from here? What would you say? Yeah, probably about 30 to 45 minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We got number nine right. It says transfer. Yeah, it does. Yeah, motion to approve item number nine is listed on the agenda. I'll second it. Motion by Christian Jane Greco, second by Christian Warren, to approve item nine on the agenda to approve the transfer of Sharon DePew from the accounts payable payroll check processing commissioner's office to the treasurer's office at a rate of 1977, uh, same rate, benefits according to the government mandates. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Make a motion to approve item number 10 as listed on the agenda. Second. Motion by Christian Warren, second by Commissioner Jim Greco to approve item 10 on the agenda. Ratify termination of Michael McClatty, correction officer to jail. Questions or comments? How long did he uh, work, Michael <coughs> Nicoletti? No, I couldn't tell you. Uh, can, you do, can we ask the warden? He's here. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Item 11. Motion to approve item number 11 is listed on the agenda. Second. Motion to approve item 11 on the agenda by Commissioner Jim Greco, signed by Commissioner Warren, uh, to ratify termination of Melissa Reed, correction officer to jail. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Make a motion to approve item number 12 is listed on the agenda. Second. <coughs> Motion by Commissioner Warren, second by Commissioner Jim Greco to approve item 12 on the agenda. Uh, ratify termination of Kyle Ellsworth from the correction officer at the jail. Questions or comments? Yes. So you have three terminations of correctional officers mm -hmm. in this uh, agenda, and we've been having that for a while, like terminations, it seems. Well, resignations. Resignations, terminations. 
Oh, so I'm just wondering, is there some kind of a special, stressful difficulty there for the correctional officers that no. they can't keep their jobs? No. All in favor? Aye. So carried. Motion approved. I have number 13 listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Jean Greco, second by Commissioner Warren to approve item 13 on the agenda to exonerate the tax claim bureau for collecting delinquent taxes uh, for the Gibson parcel so stated. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Make a motion to approve item number 14 as listed on your agenda. We looked that over. Second. Motion by Commissioner Warren, signed by Commissioner Jim Greco to approve the maintenance agreement between Susquehanna County and Top Copy for the copier at the correctional facility. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who's going to be on this committee? What's that about? I think your name is on it. <laughs> County Tick Born Disease Task Force? Or what are I they going to do? Absolutely. You're going to eliminate all the ticks in Susquehanna County? Well, since our uh, state of Pennsylvania is the worst state in the country for ticks at this point. And what are we going to do about it? Well, the state's pushing to get everybody together to try to work That's up to the task force to determine. <laughs> to educate people, to make sure everybody's aware of what's going on and what they should be doing. How long is it going to last? Who's going to be on it? Well, that's what we got to establish Sandy. after we get it approved. Just me. <laughs> Who's a, did this, is this up from the state? Yeah, this came up from the state and from um, CCAP. CCAP. The fact that it came from the state bothers me. I don't know when you the state is doing anything. <coughs> now, go ahead and do your thing. <coughs> I'll oh, make this easy. I'll make motion to approve item number 15 as listed on your agenda. You better second it there, Chairman. I'll second it. Questions or comments? How do you volunteer to be on the committee? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to be on the committee also, and I'd like to know um, any information like why it's become so bad into Pennsylvania. Like in our county, like when I moved here 25 years ago, there was no ticks that I noticed or have heard about, and now there's so many. So you, have you heard any reason for it? That's part of what the scripts are revealing and doing, working on. Okay, all in favor? No. Um, no. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I said no. Uh -huh. I, I wrote down you said no. Sure. <laughs> okay, item 16. Uh, Motion to approve item number 16 is listed on the agenda. I'll second that. Motion by Commissioner Jim Greco, second by Commissioner Warren to adopt the, re the resolution 2015-06, the designation of agent for update to the county hazard mitigation plan. Questions or comments? Yes. Uh, what is it? Can you explain more? What's the hazard <coughs> mitigation plan? In a short term, the hazard mitigation deals with all um, Disasters, man-made and natural, in the county. All in favor? Aye. Okay, item 17. I'll make a motion to approve item number 17 as listed on the Second. Motion by Christian Warren, signed by Christian Jim Greco to approve item 17 to open the sealed request for proposal for the IP camera system. All What's favor? the IP? What's the IP camera system? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. It deals with the technology. Where's it going? It connects to the, well, it replaces all the old cameras in the uh, courthouse and the system. We're redoing the whole thing, right? right? Going away from the DVRs and the old tape drives to uh, IP addresses. And Which would be internet protocol. Right. That's that piece. Is it? Yes. yes. Good thing you show up to these. Yeah, it's, you know, we got to stay. New era side. security, Waymark PA.
the Tri-M Group, LLC, Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. $6,820 and then there's a domestic relations add add on alternative number one price for another $2,070 and then another domestic relations add uh, for $5,561 now let's see if this, this goes with that Throw that one out just on principle. Okay, they're all domestic relations options. Yeah. Option options. one. Okay. Domestic relations option two. Twenty-five hundred and seventy-one dollars. Okay. We'll send them off to the consultant and engineer yeah. and we'll go from there. Public comment. 
Uh, I'd like to have some more information about the water line that's uh, being proposed. How is that developing right now? Has There's that no, cha no change since the last meeting. And is the water line going from the jail to the Bendix building also? Uh, that's a possibility. It's not guaranteed at this point. And who owns the Bendix building? Uh, it's owned by Honeywell right now. And uh, is there any kind of a water well that's functioning at the Bendix building? No. Has that been polluted by the chemicals from Bendix? Yeah, all the groundwater at that site uh, was contaminated at one time. And is it still contaminated? Well, they don't have a clear use of water there yet, but they do have a clear to go ahead and build there. To build what? More of a building? Buildings. And was that ever considered a Superfund area? A site? Superfund site? I can't remember off the top of my head. I think, I don't know, it was never on a Superfund site as far as I remember. And from what you know, has it been fully cleaned so that people can put in a, a water well? No, that's what I just said, that the water still is not safe to drink there. The water is still not safe, so that means what, the aquifer in that area is somehow compromised? Yes. And that would include the jail area? No, the jail is outside of the, the uh, blue area. So I'm still trying to understand why you need, instead of putting like a new water well for the jail, why we need a water <coughs> line? Because of the uh, depth of the wells at the jail and the inability to keep the water through the summer because they have a tendency and could dry up. It's better to get out of the water business and the testing and the storage tanks and all of that at the jail and go to the water system. Instead of just putting a whole new one, a deeper well, so that right. wouldn't dry out? Right. And so I'm, I'd like to know also, can you still have some kind of a task force to look into water lines for families who are suffering with contaminated water from gas drilling that has been verified by the DEP? Like in Dimmick and Lennox, we have whole groups of families. No, that's up to the DEP and the state legislators to handle. So it's not something you think you as the county can do with the uh, Act 13 money or any other funds? Any other public comments? Motion. Mr. I have a question. Uh, as chairman of the Democratic Party, I sent a letter to the commissioners requesting use of large courtrooms. And I got a phone call that it couldn't be approved. Then I got a letter from the commissioners from the acting chief clerk saying that it's policy, that it should be only used for, uh, let me get the right word here, official proceedings. So I asked about the policy, and, and uh, I asked Commissioner Warren about the policy, and I got an email from her that said there is no policy. So I was a little confused as to, does one commissioner not know what the policy is, or does Chief Clerk setting out, you know, where is this policy, or when did it get adopted? Got a little confusion there as to what the policy is. Well, I don't think there's an actual written policy, do you? No. You want one? Make a motion to adopt the policy that the county facilities only be utilized for county agencies. County facilities, including the County office building? Yep. No, we can't do that because you got children and youth down there. You got uh, big brothers, big sisters in there. We rent space to them. Right. As part of the service to the county. Right. Okay. Right. So I mean, as public, the planning commission, them. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. The library uses it sometimes. Okay, I'll get a motion. I'll suck up for discussion. Any discussion on that? Yes. Uh, also, economic development. Don't they use uh, some of that space? County agencies. Ca Ca county uh, agency. Uh, well, can you can we consider allowing citizens to use the citizen groups, whether it's like the Democratic Party or something else, since we pay taxes here, that we can use the county facilities for meetings? And why not? Because that's not what the motion is. Could, well, we, de could we define county facilities? Courthouse, county office building, any other building owned by the county. So it's not facilities, it's buildings. Well, you're a lawyer. Same thing to ahead, but Give me the word. Is it? <clears throat> I'll make it as broad and general as we can. That nobody can use it except the county. It's county facilities. It's, yeah. So it's any county facility. Building. Any other words you want to think about? Well, I'm just I'm waiting for you to pass it so I can say, okay, from now on, you're not going to use the green for anything. It's 
not a building. That's a facility. The green what? Green. That's owned by the county. Oh, the green is owned by the county? Of course, we, then we've got a road, which is a facility. I think, I think it should be secure. Well, what now? Secured facility. Well, that's the problem. The reason for it is the sheriff said. Uh, well, if, if that's your <coughs> motion, maybe it should include secured facility because the green is not secured. How about buildings? Mm -hmm. your I'm in the motion for buildings. How's that? Uh, I've got a, a question as yeah. to, you, you're talking about security, is that, I mean, that sounds reasonable, is that, is that the reason, security? Every time we open these, the sheriff has to have deputies here. You have to worry about security. Hey, um, do we really? Do we think I don't any know. terrorists going to bring bombs in? Let's wait. Probably not, but they got to be here. In that somebody thing. did try to bring a gun in. There was a gun in one of them one time. Yeah. In, in that vein. So you're talking about security. I stood out here just this morning. I got, it's just a source about me. You know, I watched a guy come in, didn't even go through the, wasn't even cloaked. He's got a big case with him. Probably had bombs in it. I don't know. Hand grenades, knives. Probably I had one when I had to go through it. Well, my concern there is, is if you're going to use security as a reason, which is a valid reason, aren't the rules the rules for everybody? Should be. Mm -hmm. I would think. The answer Absolutely. is yes, Absolutely. which is why you see us go through that security every time I come in. So why is it happening? It was Just brought up before, good question, and we bring it up, everybody goes who's, who's, through. Who's responsible for that? Sure. He sure. just told me that, he, that he's, you know, he has to follow directions. Um, oh, no. no. He's in charge of the security. So and your right. issue about everybody going through? Has been brought up before. Absolutely. It just rubs you the wrong way when you've been here for all your life and all of a sudden some. You're a terrorist. They better check you for guns and knives and yeah. Uh, Rick, I don't disagree with you. I ain't got a problem being checked as long as it is. Uh, you know. But because you might be a lawyer in there, you can allow well, to walk around. Uh, actually, some say they're the ones that need the closest watch. We, we sat there and we asked the, the guard. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and he said, well, they're lawyers. I have. No offense to the other. <laughs> <laughs> There's people you want to trust. <laughs> or, or they work for lawyers. Or they work, they work for a lawyer. <laughs> They're not a lawyer, but they work for a lawyer. Can you add to the resolution that everybody should be checked through the security? We're bring it up to the sheriff right after this meeting. Good. Thank you. What about the conservation district? They're not part of our, they're not a county agency. They rent from us. Right. So how does that make that different from the brother and the sister? Same thing they run from us. So they can use it? Yeah, it's part of the room agreement. Yeah. Okay. All right. So can't we just rent a room? That's rental agreement. We rent a room. Pay for it. No, that's true. Not the courthouse. But then that opens you up to, can Farm Bureau use a room to meet if you have a a state legislature come in at times they've held meetings here they're not county agencies mm -hmm. i'm just you know i think you're opening well, yourself up well, to it a depends bunch on of who's hosting meeting. the meeting whether the farm girls host the meeting or the commissioners are hosting the meeting and right now we have a pen dot meeting that the commissioners are hosting that meeting and even though farm bureau is running the meeting the commissioners are hosting the meeting so you got to get commissioners to do their own private little place so now with your, your renter agreement, so if Farm Bureau wants to meet and, you know, can they do it through conservation or? Well, conservation, if conservation has an agreement with us, which they do, and they're using the facilities, if they bring Farm Bureau into their, into their meeting, that's fine. But it has to but be their meeting, be. they're responsible for it. Any other questions or comments? Yes. Uh, can you give us an update on the road situation and bridges? Uh, since hang on, I got a motion. All in favor on this motion? Aye. Aye. Nay. Opposed? Yes. Uh, can you give us an update on the roads and bridges since the last meeting, since two weeks ago? How are things going? Yeah, there's uh, been a lot of improvement. 167's been. Uh, 
Uh, most of that's been paved. They're working on it again today. 706 West has been uh, completed. Um, 706 East, uh, they've already started doing the uh, edges of the road, so that's getting ready to be done. Um, they've also got some work done over on uh, uh, West Main going out of uh, Susquehanna and Brushville Road, so they are making getting some of the work done. Now, are they going to actually pave over 167 South after they've been doing those yeah, patching? Yeah, go down and now they've already got most of it already paved. And what about 706 East? Will that be fully paved too? That's supposed to be paved also. Okay. Motion to adjourn. And I was, I was going to ask too, um, uh, I was reading about Bradford County and the Rocket Courier. Uh, the commissioners are considering a, a royalty suit to mm -hmm. sue for royalties um, as a county because of all the low payments and it's been getting worse and worse. Um, are you considering any of that or are you in contact with the commissioners of Bradford County to compare notes? Well, actually, I didn't talk to one of the commissioners this morning from Bradford County. And actually, there was a movement yesterday, I think it's House Bill 1322, uh, that uh, is coming out of committee and going to the floor for a vote, or is supposed to be going to the floor for a vote, which deals with the minimum royalty bill. So that's what I think they're all waiting on right now to see what happens. Yeah. Isn't that House Bill 1351? Maybe it's 1351. I can't you, remember. You guys haven't passed a resolution supporting any, any of that legislation, have you? Can you pass some kind of a resolution supporting that um, legislation? Would you want to consider something like that? Well, all the legislators already know where we stand on all of this. We've been very vocal about it. And do you know why Bradford County has more of a problem than we do, it's it seems? Because they have different gas companies they're working with. Speaking of impact, I want to talk about impact money. Four years ago, there was a, a, a candidate site where all three of you were at. And the question was brought up about what, we had, there was no impact. My matter of fact, the question was, what are we going to do about uh, if we do get this money? And all three of you had different answers. Michael said it wasn't ever going to happen. Uh, you said that you were going to establish, a, your idea was to establish uh, public committees to determine or to make recommendations on how to handle that money, and, and Mary Ann didn't answer at all. So my, my question is, since we're ready for another four years, mm -hmm. two of your candidates, you apparently haven't done that the last four years. Is mm -hmm. there any implication that you might do it at, at four years later than you said you would? Well, the idea is right now, once we get the uh, county financial situation under control and the, the assets under control, then once that money frees up, then it'll be uh, especially like this year, I think this year we're looking at um, you know doing something with the uh, volunteer organizations, the fire departments, and and ambulance crews, looking at see what we can do to work with them. Of course, we do something with them every year. Uh, we provide them with uh, equipment as well as phone banks and things like that. So this year we're looking at trying to do something a little different with them. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> I can't speak for the other candidates. But as far as myself, uh, our major concern at this point is still our 911 center which is a $7 million bill to fix. Uh, once we can get through that hurdle and, uh, and get that last asset resolved, uh, then yeah, then you know, looking at different things we can do with the funding as far as uh, promoting, we are looking at the waterline project of infusing that with part of Act 13 money. Uh, we are so looking at uh, industrial park studies to see what we can do there. So there's all kinds of possibilities at this point, but Right now, the major concern that I think is on the table is the 911 center and trying to address that shortfall, especially with the lack of 911 funding coming out of Harrisburg. So, okay, so the, the public input thing that you that you promoted four years ago is, is a little different. It's, you're going to create the input. Well, you know, everything changes as, as you go through it. You know, uh, to think that we uh, would get a report back from the. Uh, from the consultant saying our 911 center was totally outdated and, and ready to shut down and probably only be functioning for another year or two. So, you know, that's that changes everything. Right, that, that sort of explains the process. Another question on, on, on your impact money. And you and I attended, and none of the others here were at a meeting in Wysox a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And they, they explained to us what the rules and regs were as yeah. far as reporting. Right. Well, you know, I'm not coming here to see how you spend the money, but I, I look up on the, on your website, mm -hmm. you've got those reports, mm -hmm. and based on those reports, you haven't spent a nickel of money in two and a half years. 
Well, that's not true. I understand that. After I looked, and at, after I looked at the, the budget. And that's one of the arguments I've had with, uh, with Harrisburg and with the PUC is their reporting documents are flawed because you're only reporting in the year you receive the money. You don't report what happens to that money if you spend it the year later. So the problem is, is like any good financial institution uh, would do, uh, we're not sure how much money we're going to get for the year, so we don't budget what we're going to do with the money right. until we get the money and find out how much we're getting. It's hard to say, well, let's spend $6 million when we don't know if we're getting $6 million. So the year we receive it, it all goes into capital reserve until the following year where it's budgeted through our budgeting process and used through our budget process. So then you haven't spent any money in the last year and a half, well, the previous year and a half. You're asking what did we really do with the money? Well, yeah. Well, I don't no, no, what I'm asking you is how transparent are you? You know, he used the phrase, "This is a license to steal." And he's right. right. No, no, it's not. It's I don't. It's not. Let me explain to you why. There is a list of things in Act 13 that right. we can use the money for. Right. Very broad, 13 items. Very broad. Right. We have taken advantage of the broadness. Right. As, as we rob Peter to pay Paul. So every account that we have, Act 13 is, has its own separate account. We have an individual that, does, that spends most of her time tracking the Act 13 funding as to where it's spent and how it's spent to make sure it falls within the categories. And we've got reports that we just sent back to, uh, I think it was one of the colleges and one was to CCAP as to actual how the money was spent for the last three years. We've all gotten them from business. Right. Because just for the, why I'm asking you this, Nobody is doing that reporting. You know, the rules are the rules, even if they're bad rules. Right. And your reports show no expenditures for any year since three years ago. Well, that's absolutely true. Because the year we received the money, we didn't spend it. But you spent it the next year. But you don't report it that way. That's not how the state requires you to and do it. The state that. doesn't require you to report it that way. I've been on the phone with PUC discussing this issue many times. As a matter of fact, I've taken two webinars with them going over the reporting function. I've also got their manual printed out where it says, real specific, you only report the year that you receive the funds. You don't report anything after so, that so you year. just keep pushing along. Well, that's the fallacy of, of the transparency of it is that you can't see how it was spent because there is no reporting document to show how the money actually finally got spent. Isn't that sad? People talk about transparent government. Mm. Just not the way to find that. Do you want me to finish answering your real question now? Yeah. Act 13 has a list of things that we can spend money on. So what we have done, and as you say, it's very broad. We can use it for law enforcement. Well, that's the sheriff's office, DA's office. Let's say it costs $5 million to run the sheriff's office. We can spend Act 13 money to fund the sheriff's office, save the general fund dollars that we would have normally spent, and what we've done is fully funded the pension. Mm -hmm. That's how we utilize the money. That's all in the budget. It is all transparent. What I don't disagree with is the fact the way the state, as Alan said, has us report it. You can't see any of that. It's not transparent. That's right. right. But that's why we're telling you, and, and we do it in our budget. Five million, that's free general fund money up that we can spend any way we like, which is to reduce your taxes every year for the last eight years fully fund the pension, the only county in the state with a fully funded pension, to the benefit of all the taxpayers. Plus allowed, That's the real answer. Plus, by allowing us to uh, use it for those 13 items, like judicial and a few of the other ones, that allowed us to free up the revenue to take and do the $5 million renovation and project. Everybody, everybody's done that, but I guess my point, it's not necessarily a complaint to you, but it, the, why can't you report the expenses? Because I followed your trail on your reports. And based on those reports, you should have like ten and a half million dollars in the bank. Sure. And, and then you look into your budget, and it's like, now wait, a minute, this is a six million dollar carryover. Right. And that's the and that's the biggest argument the senators had in um, in Harrisburg when I was down there testifying was that they have no understanding what's going on with the impact fee because they have nothing to look at mm -hmm. because the way the PUC is reporting it, the senators have no clue what's going on with the money. So that's why they invested in having somebody do a consulting group or a college go out and do a study to find out how this money is actually getting spent because the reporting isn't done the way it should be. Now you would think that the easiest thing to do would be for the PUC to say, okay, we're going to change the way you re report this 
So we don't have to pay somebody else a bunch of money to take and, and get a report that we should already have to begin with. That people should be able to get to without having to go right. through. Right. I think your, yeah. your budget's 200 or 300 pages and trying to figure out, you know, what, what you Good luck with that. Okay, that's my money too. It's not just you three's money, it's, it's right. county money. And we all have opinions on how we should do things. Right. There's nothing wrong with having a discussion on how that happens as opposed to having in some room in the courthouse that now the public can only come to if they're at an official function. So you know, transparency is a good thing, no matter who's It's the only way to do things. It keeps everybody out of trouble. Hmm. So, you ask questions, you give you the answers. No, nothing wrong with that. And actually, the uh, spreadsheets we're putting together now eventually will go on the uh, web page to show uh, from day one how the funding's been spent. There you go. You took care of you, forget about the rest of the state. Right. Uh, can't wait for the state to do what they're supposed to be doing. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us what the balance is approximately of Act 13 money now in in the county, for the county? With what we've just committed, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's it? It's under a million? Yeah. So when is the next check supposed to come in? Uh, I think it's August that it comes in. Now, at this point, because they're uh, the whole industry is much is doing much less. Like even Cabot is supposedly pulled back forty percent of their development, mm -hmm. so the checks are going to be much less. No, actually, this year the checks in Susquehanna County were higher than they were last year. But eventually, if they're pulling back, maybe the next check will be lower. Listen, I've said since day one, eventually it will get lower, and eventually it's going to go away. At some point, this money's got to be gone. So if you're using it for your operations and. Uh, and to hire more people and mm -hmm. pay them higher salaries, you're going to have a void to fill at some point in time. So the next check you feel is going to still be a sufficient check? Well, I already have the number. The number is higher than it was last year. Oh, so what's the number that you have? It's just over $6 million. That's just for the county, and then all the townships get their checks. Right. With all the townships and everything, I think it was a little over almost $17 million. With the townships? Yeah. So County is the largest county receipt. Right. I, 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 thought, I thought Bradford. No, I, thought Bradford. I, think I think Washington was. I'd have and to Washington. Check it, but I think Washington is still the highest. So then Bradford might be next, and we might be and third. Bradford was still over us, but they're continuing to decline each year. Springville was the highest municipality bringing in money right. in the state. Right. Was so that really one eight hundred thousand? Was it? It was an eight hundred thousand in one of your articles. Yeah. It is 800,000. 850, I think it's 858 or 853,000. Yeah. That's for Springville? So yeah. it's not quite a million for Springville then. Right. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any other questions? Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.